first we're going to start with uh, just an opening comment from you, Mario. Once you get settled, take your time. That water there is uh, is fresh and, and for you. Thank you. Love with the bell in the middle. Yeah. Thank you. Why don't you tell us, uh, after you, you, you get settled, tell us an uh, opening comment about your performance tonight. Um, first of all, I mean, I want to give, you know, I want to tip my hat to Ryan Carl, good friend of mine for a long time. I mean, we knew he was going to come with everything. And, you know, we knew it, it was going to be a rough and tough fight, but I was prepared for 12 rounds. I was in there being patient. And, I mean, we, we got him out of there sooner than we thought. But, again, I mean, I went in there just taking my shots. Um, just uh, it took a minute to get used to, to the pressure he was putting because it was so awkward. But I mean, um, you know, I started to find my rhythm as as the rounds kept on progressing. How would you rate your performance overall? I mean, for a homecoming, your first title defense, that had to feel pretty good. Yeah, no, it, it feels great. Um, you know, I, I rate my performance maybe uh, a B. I mean, of course, there's all the things that you can work on. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble finding my jab. Um, again, just because of how awkward he was putting the pressure. And, um, but I mean, I, I felt, you know, I was picking my shots were very nice up the middle. I was sipping a lot of big shots. So, I mean, I would give myself a B. Questions here, guys. Uh, okay. John, yeah, uh, he seemed to come out more aggressively in the second round and kind of surprised you a little bit. Did he hurt you at any time at all? I mean, he was in the throw with bad intentions. You know, he landed some of um, some odd punches, but um, again, it was just you know just taking me a minute to find my rhythm. Um, but I mean, um, there wasn't anything that that hurt me. There wasn't anything that really uh, was offsetting to me. As far as homecoming go, it'd be nice to have a, a packed house, but under the under the circumstances, were you, were you satisfied with the, with the crowd and your performance? I mean, like you said, I mean, I mean, of course, you know, I wish that you know, it could have been a packed house, but it couldn't. But I mean, I'm still very excited, you know, with the outcome of this fight. Um, I'm the first person from San Antonio who has ever defended a world title. So that's a, a huge honor. Um, and I'm again, I'm humbled to be one of the, the the first person in San Antonio history, you know, to accomplish that. Hey, Mario, Mike Hoppinger here. Congratulations. You know, now you're. You guys at PBC 140 pounds, we just probably had a nice performance as well. Adrian Broner says he's going back to 140. Who do you want next? I mean, me being, you know, a champion, I would like to, to unify with either Ramirez or Josh Taylor. I mean, those are huge fights. That Those, I mean, me being the fighter I am, those are the fights that I want. But again, I mean, we're going to sit down with, you know, my people, Al Heyman, um, my managers, and we're going to decide what, what my next move is. Right, um, but with Taylor and Ramirez expected to fight each other next, who do you, who, if there's anyone you can pick between besides those two, is there anyone that you like? Um, I like, I mean, Josh Taylor, you know, his boxing ability, but I mean, again, you know, the type of style that uh, Ramirez has, uh, you know, he breaks a lot of people and it's just a fight that, you know, um, you would just have to just see unfold. Could you see tonight that Ryan was woozy after the headbutt? Did you, did you really go after him after that or? What was your what was your reaction? I mean, he was, there, there was some big um, punches that I landed. I mean, before the headbutt that um I know I saw in his body language, you know, that really hurt him. Um, I could hear him on the inside, you know, with, with the body shots. And um, but I mean, you know, the it, again, it was a real fight. You know, it's, um, we clash heads. I mean, it's part of boxing. But I mean, that wasn't the reason why like why he got out of there. Mario, congratulations. Um, when Regis Progray was in here earlier, he, he mentioned that he would like to fight you, obviously get some version of the title back. Uh, what are your thoughts on that fight specifically, especially because Taylor and Ramirez are going to, it could be a while before you get the winner in that fight. Um, I mean, I'm in the sport, you know, to give boxing fans, you know, the exciting fights. Um, I mean, a, a fight with, with Regis, I mean, it, it, would, it would be huge at 140, especially with him being, you know, with uh, the PBC team now. Um, so, I mean, that's a very... Um, very likely fight to happen. Did you, did you see it? Did you see his performance? Or I know you were getting ready for your own fight. Obviously, did you happen to see any of it in the locker room or anything? Or no? Uh, I didn't see much. I just saw you know when he started to land. You know, um, I believe it was a, a left hook that um, you know he hurt him with. But again, I mean Regis is a strong fighter, um, and I mean he he found his mark. Do you like um, uh, there were any ring rust? You had a thirteen month layoff. Did you? 
be any ring rust on us. No ring rust at all. Again, I mean, it's a 12 round fight. I wanted to just be impatient. Um, and again, I mean, um, I knew it was gonna be a rough fight. And I know I had 12 rounds to work. So I mean, there was no rush for me. I was in there, you know, picking my shots, making a miss, um, his wild ones. And I mean, it paid off. Do you feel like you had anything to prove after a, your, first, your fight against Ahmedov ended kind of controversially? Did, did you feel like you had anything to prove tonight? No, I don't, I don't feel I had anything to prove. Um, again, I mean, I I showed the, the type of fighter I was my last fight. I mean, and it was no different this fight. I mean, again, I was ready for a rough and tough 12 round fight. And um, I mean, like I said, I mean, that's what I was prepared for. Okay, question here from AP. Uh, congratulations. I was curious, your first fight, you know, in the COVID era, what, what was it like? Did it, did it impact your training? Did it impact your, your preparation for the fight? Yeah. Um, Campbell's a lot different, you know, of course, a lot more strict it was, as far as farm partners go and everything. Um, the bubble was something, you know, I don't want to get used to. <laughs> but, um, I mean, again, it was just part of what's going on right now. And um, I was very thankful, though, to be a part of, you know, the first show back with an audience. Yeah, and speaking of that, like, you know, they mentioned earlier, the crowd was kind of small, but still pretty good crowd for, for COVID. I mean, how excited were you to see uh, that many fans out there? I was very excited. Uh, I mean, it's just the fact, you know, that, again, I mean, I'm, I'm here at home. And I mean, it felt weird, you know, being at home, but not really at home because, again, I, mean, I couldn't really leave anywhere but the bubble. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I hope, you know, I give, you know, my hometown fans, you know, um, an exciting fight. Uh, and uh, I hope it was worth it for them. There was a lot of probably to watch it on paper. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. I mean, um, you know, where... I'm mean, thankful, you know, for everybody who tuned in, bought the card, whether it was for me, whether it was for Tank, you know, I mean, we, we all got exposure. Hey, Over here, Mar hey Mario, uh, where do you think your punching power ranks in the division? Uh, it seemed like, like you said, every time you were able to land clean with either hand, it hurt him. You could hear the thuds ringside. Where do you think it ranks at 140? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's up there. Um, I mean, again, even in the Akhmadov fight, um, I was able to put him on the canvas twice. You know, I carried my power throughout the whole 12 rounds. And I think it's definitely something that people in my division, you know, should, um, should be aware of, you know, that should be put on notice about. Hey, uh, Mario, uh, two questions. One is, uh, did you feel the fight was, uh, the, the stoppage was too late? Well, I know you ended up knocking him out and, and you settled it, but did you think it, it should have been stopped earlier when he was all a little woozy and stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, at uh, that too, man, I know Ryan, you know, I don't want to be in there, you know, beating him down. You know, I know his his family very well, very respectful family, his team. But, um, I mean, I, I felt it was a little late, you know, just given his body language, given the, the headbutt. But, um, I mean, there wasn't really, I mean, at that point, much hope. And uh, I know you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you want to unify with uh, Ramirez and, and Taylor or the winner of that fight. Um, but to you, outside of those two uh, fighters, what is the biggest fight at 140 pounds, in your personal opinion, that can be made? Um, I mean, right now, I mean, the only fights I mean I, I could think of, you know, are the ones um, with the guys that have the belt. And right now, I mean, that's Taylor and Ramirez. But again, I mean, I'm here, you know, to get boxing fans, you know, the exciting fights. I'm willing to fight anybody in my division. And um, I mean, that's that's the type of fighter that I am. Would you consider welcoming Teofimo Lopez at 140 pounds? Yeah, I mean, we had an interview about that. I mean, if he moves up, if the, if the fight is you know, brought up to me, um, I mean, again, I mean, I'm willing to fight anybody. I mean, that includes uh, the T.O. film if he moves up. Okay, we got some questions from uh, colleagues on Zoom. Couldn't be with us tonight. We'll start with Stephen Hayes. Stephen, open your mic and go ahead. Hey, Mario. Stephen Hayes, TV Sports. Congratulations on your first title defense. Two questions. One. Did you make it a point to go to the body early and often? Um, I mean, that's part of just, you know, my style. Um, you know, I was talking you know, me from the amateurs, you know, to, um, to chop the tree. I've always been a fan of body shots. And I mean, you know, especially in a uh, world title fight, you know, they, they really pay off, you know, towards the middle and late rounds. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I went out there, you know, with the intention, you know, to break the body, you know, real early. I mean, again, I, I know the type of style that Ryan had. I knew if I didn't do anything to slow him down, it, it would, you know, it would stay a rough fight the whole 12 rounds. And number two, uh, I know you said you were taking it one round at a time, but that sixth round, you seemed to come out there with a 
a lot of determination. Did you feel at that point you could get him out of there? Um, yeah, man, I could, again, I mean, I was reading his body language in there. Um, at that too, I mean, I was finding my rhythm. Uh, again, you know, the first couple rounds, it was taking a minute just because how wild he was coming. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I was really just, you know, starting to get warmed up. Um, I, I was ready, you know, to go a hard 12 rounds. So, I mean, I was going to keep on picking it up um, slowly. Appreciate it. Congratulations again. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Last questions here from Cameron Buford. Cameron, unmute and you can go ahead. Hey, Mario. Um, you kind of touched on it right there. The first couple of rounds, you seen it kind of catch you off guard and it kind of took you a moment to get in the rhythm. But is, is that the case? Is that how you saw it going in, in the, inside the fight that after the third round, you kind of got your rhythm and then obviously put him out? In the in the fifth and sixth round, well, you could have went out in the fifth. Is that how you saw it? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, uh, it was you know taking a minute just you know to get his timing down, you know, just to really get used to the way he was moving, the way he was stepping, and um, you know the way he was coming forward with punches. You know, he was. Um, I knew you know he didn't go into this fight. I had the better boxing ability, you know, the better movements. Um, it was just getting used to you know the way that that he was moving, the way he was putting his pressure. What's, what's, how can you get better, Mario? Uh, we talked about this uh, a few times. Are you just putting fights together, putting your game together? How can you, next training camp, what can you do to get better, to be a better boxer? I mean, me and, um, me and Virgil will sit down, you know, my, my team and discuss, you know, what, what I should have done from the beginning, you know, what I need to continue on doing. Um, I, that's just something, you know, me and my team will, will sit down and talk about. But, I mean, like I said, I mean, I would rate myself, you know, maybe – a B, you know, at the most. Uh, there's always things you know, I can improve on when um, when I fight. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you, how you improve from the B that you give yourself. We want to see how you improve, team. Have a good one. <laughs> well too. said, Cameron. Okay, Mario, congratulations. Thank and I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween, guys. Safe travels for the short ride home. Appreciate it.